Sir, my Rahu Ketu uh, uh, Dasha has started, but I'm wondering why am I seeing snakes in my dreams? <laughs> Suddenly, Rahu Ketu Anta Dasha starts, or Mahadasha, whatever, or could be even Pratyanta, and you start seeing snakes. Is it true? Does it mean that uh, it can happen literally? Or is it a hallucination? Or what is it? Well, the answer is it could be any of these, <laughs> which means it it is very well possible that you actually see snakes, or you could also be under hallucination because Rahu and Ketu are karakas for snakes and also for hallucination, right? Now, see when you say uh, say snakes, uh, whenever uh, the Vedic scriptures speak of Rahu Ketu, they do they just don't speak of Rahu Ketu's relation to snakes, uh, literally, it can be literal, but it can also uh, be representing the qualities of snakes, right? So, what is what is the quality of a snake? It is said that even a saintly person is happy when a snake or a scorpion is killed, right? Why? Because Snakes personify one very, very, very detrimental, uh, one quality which is very detrimental for our spiritual life. For what is it? It's envy. Have you heard of it? Envy. <laughs> Did you ever feel envious of anybody? Or have you seen people getting envious of somebody? Or do you know somebody who is envious of you? The list is endless, right? So there are many snakes roaming in this world. So first of all, uh, if you go as per the Vedic tradition, we know there are 8.4 million species, right? But the question is, who gets the body of a snake? The, somebody, right? Somebody has to be there. So everybody gets bodies depending on their karma, right? So as Lord Krishna says in the Gita, Antakale cha mameva smaran mukto akaleva, that at the end of your life, whatever you think of, that destination you shall attain, right? So therefore, it means that if uh, now, then the question is, how do you know what will you think of at the end of your life, right? So sometimes people say, oh, I will do whatever I want in my life. You know, I will just marry and party and celebrate and do all sins, do all nonsense. And at the end of my life, I will just chant, oh, Ram, please save me. Oh, Krishna, please save me. Oh, somebody, anybody. So uh, do you think that just by doing this, uh, you will get liberation at the time of your life if you uh, do not follow any principles which the scriptures advise us to follow? And at the end of your life, you chant the name of Ram and you will go back to the spiritual world. Do you think? How many of you think it is possible to go uh, in this way? Please write it down in the comments. Well, this is not possible because if during your life you did not chant the name of God, then it is almost impossible that at the end of your death, uh, at the end of your life during the moment of death, at that moment you will be able to think of somebody who you never thought of, right? Because they say that at the time of death, there's a flashback of a hundred lifetimes, right? What you did in your past lifetime, the recent past, the just the one before this, the next, even the one before, 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 like that, a hundred lifetimes, you get a flashback. And wherever your strongest attachment is, if you're attached to somebody, a man or a woman, then that person's image will be where your consciousness will get stuck, right? Or if you are obsessed with money or property or whatever, or maybe with God, right? So then that, fin that final image during your death is decided based on the level of attachment that you have with, with anything or with anybody. And then you get a body which allows you to fulfill those desires, right? Depending on your karma, of course. So for example, if you have 
a desire at the end of your life to live in a very big mansion, right? Big mansion, big place. It's like a uh, uh, filthy rich mansion, right? That's your desire, right? So your desire will be fulfilled. But the problem is it will be fulfilled to the extent you have that pious karma for that. I'm talking fully on mundane terms, okay? Now, suppose as per desire, you want to live in a palace, right? Very big palace. But as per your karma, you are supposed to be an animal, right? Now, who is an animal? An animal is one who, who has no restraint over his senses, right? So an animal is one who uh, just behaves through his instincts. So if we behave similarly, our mind says, oh, go and do this. And we just go and do it. Have you heard of the saying, just do it? <laughs> so if that's our motto in life, then we are heading in for animal bodies in our next consecutive lifetimes. Because the animal body is exclusively meant for materialistic enjoyment, right? Exclusive. If that is what we want, then that is what we get what you get what you want right but then you may say oh very nice i'll get an animal body right wow and fantastic i can do whatever enjoyment that i want right uh, have you seen monkeys i've gone to vrindavan and i saw my god so many monkeys what, what do they do jumping from a she monkey you know, every every five minutes jumping and stealing uh, fruits, taking the spectacles of uh, the visitors in Vindavan, taking, you know, the, going into the ladies' bags and you know, taking out stuff. Well, this is what they do. Their entire life is based on two things, food and sexuality. That's all. That's it. Nothing else. Whenever they find a she monkey or whenever they find some something which they can put inside their mouth, wow, that's it. They found the jewel, right? So therefore, you got to understand that the animal body is perfectly designed for uh, materialistic enjoyment. But the problem is this very high level of suffering involved, right? And there is no inquisitiveness for uh, spirituality, right? Uh, you won't find a dog or a cat or elephant coming and you know sitting in a temple and chanting some names of God because it is Janmashtami, you, you will not find them, right, doing this. Of course, they also have emotions and all this, but spiritual inquiry, Athato Brahma Jigyasa, what is beyond matter, that is something which they cannot ask, right? Of course, the, we have exceptional examples like Gajendra and all, but these are exceptions, right? I'm talking of normal animals. What to speak of animals these days when humans are not inquisitive. So, therefore, if we cultivate envy throughout our life, if we are jealous, we are envious, we act, then that's like the body, uh, that's like preparing to get the body of a snake because the snake will hit you for no reason. Absolutely no reason. That is why the snake's body is very severely condemned in the Vedic scriptures. Okay, That is why they say, you know, oh, you are like a sarpa snake. Right? Of course, we also have the Nagas. They are different. They are uh, heavenly beings, right? The Nagas. So whenever uh, we talk of snakes, uh, we are referring to Sarpa, right? Uh, we are not referring to the Nagas, okay? The Nagas are very powerful. They are much million, billion, zillion, trillion times stronger than human beings, than the Naras, right? And they have nag money and they're like extremely powerful. They're extremely beautiful, extremely intelligent, extremely handsome. It's like beyond comparison, right? But we are talking of Sarpa here, right? The literal snakes that you see in this world, right? So therefore, this is what Rahu Ketu does. Rahu Ketu can make you terribly envious sometimes, right? And... As the scriptures say, Atmavan Manyate Jagat, the, the world is a manifestation of your own consciousness, right? So therefore, you may not be envious of anybody now, 
but it is very well possible that if you are getting these dreams then maybe in some lifetime or maybe somewhere in this lifetime itself or maybe somewhere now you are cultivating envy for somebody right or it may not be that you are actively um, cultivating envy but it also might be possible that you give into it very easily right you are not cultivating but whenever you uh, feel like getting envious you you get envious immediately but you have to understand what is envy basically envy is nothing but indirect appreciation right so suppose there is a student uh, who has got second class right so he uh, becomes envious of a student who has got first class right he will never become envious of a student who has got third class why because that person the object of your envy has something which you don't and which you desperately want or something which you feel is very valuable right so when you get envious of somebody understand that you are actually indirectly appreciating the person you are accepting the fact that the person has something very good now either that is good or bad from a scriptural perspective that is another um, arena of debate and discussion from a scriptural perspective from any perspective but the point is you think that is something very valuable so indirectly you are appreciating the person right so therefore during rahu ketu dasha uh, if you are getting dreams of snakes or like sarpas or flying snakes or sometimes you know colorful snakes right these things can happen so you got to understand that this is happening because there are some desires some envious traits envious tendencies within me so therefore now the question is what should you do right so the thing is whenever you see them you have to understand that they are representing envy so at a practical level please give up your envy right of course you can't superficially just give up envy that's not possible only a mahapurush can do it mahajan can do it not even mahapurush mahajan is required right like we have the 12 mahajans in the shrimad bhagavatam Uh, but the thing is at least what you can do is n- stop giving into it right so you are here and you know you get some news oh this person has got this that and you start become envious like snakes you know waiting to devour that person that's like giving into it right of course then there is like different levels of envy one is like passive where you are just oh feeling jealous okay I, I i won't do anything you know the higher form of envy is you go and you are doing everything to pull that person down right you are doing anything and everything in your uh, capacity either to kill the person or kill the person rep, uh, person's reputation one of the two right because in scriptures there are different kinds of deaths right as per modern material science there is only one type of death where the body is not respiring anymore it's finished right we all know that we know that we will experience that in some point of time in our life but in the scriptures in the vedic tradition there are different kinds of deaths one is the death which we know the other death is uh, the death of somebody's desire to live the another form of death is ruining somebody's reputation right so either you try to destroy the person or his or her reputation or steal something which that person has and then that person doesn't have a desire to live anymore right <clears throat> so if if you feel that you are undergoing any kind of hallucination or you are seeing these dreams and it's freaking you out then maybe it's a good time to see any kind of and snakes also represent poison okay because uh, because see what is poison poison is again not the literal poison you know poison is the poison of hatred and envy that we carry within ourselves right which uh, 
which does not let us sleep peacefully, which does not let us be in peace, right? And you can very easily spot when somebody is envious or when somebody is uh, uh, giving into envy, right? Very easily it can be spotted, right? So therefore, first of all, do not entertain this. And secondly, whenever you feel envious, understand that you are indirectly appreciating that person. So why not directly go and appreciate him or her? Hey, Mr. Sir, Madam, what an achievement. Good work. Great. Keep it up. Wow. What an achievement. Of course, deep down inside, you will feel, oh, I wish I was in that position. Right? Of course, you know, now I'm just pretending, you know, externally. Ah, but that's thousand times better than sitting and plotting against somebody, right? If you could not achieve what he or she has achieved, then at least you can appreciate them, right? <laughs> or else snakes have this mindset that if not me, then nobody else, right? And the envy is generally always there in similar circles, right? So for example, if, uh, if a person is a very good singer, then he or she will not necessarily become envious of somebody who is a good cricketer or who, one who plays football, right? <laughs> the person will be envious of another singer because they are getting more praise, right? Within the same domain. They are getting fame through the same domain, which he or she could not, right? Or could not to the extent that he or she wanted. So, and, so this is the second thing. First is do not entertain these thoughts. Second is directly go and appreciate the person. Number three is you should start doing meditation. This is very essential. If you do not do meditation, then uh, these thoughts can come and uh, things can really be bizarre. Okay. So do some mantra meditation. Chant Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Please chant this and also chant the Vishnu Sastram every day. Uh, if you chant this, and you can also do Narsimha Yagya, Narsimha Homa, Narsimha Kavach, Ram Raksha Stotra, Narayan Kavach from the Srimad Bhagavatam. You can do any of these, right? And when you do this, what happens is your inner psyche gets purified. The envy starts reducing gradually. You start seeing people, you start seeing the good in people. Yes. And what happens? Because see, what happens when you are envious of somebody? What happens? What happens? Just think. Imagine you are sitting here and there is this one person you are very envious of. What happens? What happens? The only thing you see is freaking false, right? No matter what that person does, you will always find false. You will always criticize. You will always try to pull that person out. No matter what he or she does. Have you uh, seen such people around? <laughs> it's plenty, right? It's like uh, it's, they're all around the place. So there's already so much filth, dirt, and disgusting energies out there. So do not contribute to that more because uh, as Kaliuga is worsening, uh, if we do not actively try to keep ourselves out of envy, then we will become more and more envious. And then we have social media. Wow. All thanks to social media, right? Everybody has the perfect life in social media, except in reality. <laughs> Everybody's life is perfect in Facebook, especially Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, in Facebook, everybody is happy. In Instagram, everybody has a very happening life. In LinkedIn, everybody is smart, right? And when it comes to the reality, they are frustrated, miserable, and depressed, right? Why? Because we are trying to compare ourselves endlessly with others for no reason to feel better, right? The problem is whoever you are, wherever you are, whenever you try to do this, there will always be somebody better than you in some area of life. You may be the most handsome most beautiful, charming person, but there will be somebody who is more intelligent than you. You may be the most intelligent, but there will be somebody more beautiful than you, right? You may be uh, the most beautiful and the most intelligent, but there will be somebody who is richer than you, right? 
you may be rich beautiful and intelligent but somebody will have a better married life than you right somebody will have better children than you right so there's only one person who can have everything in perfection and more than anybody else in this world and that is god himself nobody other than him can have this all right so therefore we have to understand that as per our horoscope and our karma our actions and our inclinations we have a particular karma which we have to experience and then we and depending on that it will be decided what will be our strengths what will be our weaknesses right and uh, what are things where we will do good or reasonably good or excellent or maybe terrible right so always try to improve yourself but do not try to compare comparison is the biggest uh, thief of joy right it's the biggest there's no other curse than comparison so therefore the more you compare the more you will feel envious the more you will find somebody who is better than you always it is right so the more you compare the more you will find somebody better and the more you find somebody better the more you will give in to envy 24 by 7 right so therefore please do these remedies if you are seeing snakes or you are feeling like there's hallucination or whatever it is right and then uh, try to get rid of envy or at least if you can't get rid of do not entertain it right i hope that will help you all right thank you very much for your patience if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to down below and if you want a consultation from me regarding your horoscope please go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time he will protect you from snakes lions animals and beasts and maybe other envious people too <laughs> thank you